let's continue practicing factoring polynomials. Remember that our first step is to factor out a greatest common factor. We're going to try to factor 14x to the fourth plus 7x to the third minus 42x squared. Can you find the greatest common factor with all of these terms? If we look at the numbers, 14, 7, negative 42, they are all multiples of 7. And if we look at the variables, x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, I have x's in all of my terms, and the smallest power of x I have is squared. So 7x squared will be my greatest common factor. Now I need to figure out how to recover the original terms. What do I multiply by the greatest common factor to get those original terms? So 7 times 2 is 14. x squared and x squared will give me x to the fourth. 7x squared times x will give me x to the third and 7x squared times 6 will give me 42x squared. So my greatest common factor in these terms, 7x squared, will use the distributive property in reverse to factor 7x squared out. So our first step, find the greatest common factor and factor it out. Second step, count the terms. Here I'm going to ignore my greatest common factor and only look at the other factor in the parentheses to see if I can factor it more. I have one, two, three terms, so I'm going to try factoring using the AC method. Break apart the middle term and then factor by grouping. AC method says A, the number being multiplied by x squared, is 2 b, the number being multiplied by x is 1, and c, the number by itself is negative 6. I need to find two numbers that multiply to equal a times c, 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, and the add to be b, which is 1. So can you think of two numbers that multiply to be negative 12 and add to be 1? Thinking about factors of negative 12, negative 1 and 12, negative 2 and 6, and negative 3 and 4. If I add them, negative 3 and 4 wins because when I add them, I get 1. So I'm going to take this middle term, x, this middle term x, and break it into, it does not matter which order I use this in, so I'm going to do negative 3x plus 4x. It won't matter the order that you break the x into. So whether I did negative 3x plus 4x, or if I did 4x minus 3x, it won't matter in the end. The intermediate steps will be a little different, but the end result will be the same. I'm going to bring all the other stuff down, 2x squared and 6, and I'm going to leave the 7x squared outside so I don't forget about it. And now we factor by grouping. We'll group the first two, we'll group the last pair. What do 2x squared and 3x have in common? They have an x in common. Hopefully you're starting to get the hang of it. If you need that intermediate step, go ahead and use it. Find the greatest common factor and then factor them out. But I see 2 and 3, no numbers in common, x squared and x, I have an x in common, so I'm going to factor it out. 2x times x will give me 2x squared, 3 times x will give me negative 3x, the negative 3 there in the middle. Plus sign's going to come down, 4x minus 6, what do they have in common? Well, 4 and 6 have 2 in common, 2 times 2x is 4x. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, and 7x squared on the outside, hanging out. Scoot up my work a little bit. And now I have 2x minus 3, 2x minus 3, they are the same. 7x squared out front, and then in the last parentheses I'm going to write the leftover pieces, x plus 2. This is because of that 
reverse distributive property. We're factoring out the 2x minus 3, so we're going to put inside the parentheses what 2x minus 3 was multiplied by. And here we have 7x squared times 2x minus 3 times x plus 2 as our answer. And we do a quick check. Third step is always check the factors that we have and make sure we can't factor them any further. So we look at the parentheses, 2x minus 3. I have no squares or cubes in that parentheses, so I don't have any special products. Remember, if we have two terms, we could have special products. And we don't have any greatest common factor with 2x and 3. We don't have any greatest common factor with x and 2. And again, no perfect squares or perfect cubes. And so we're done. We can factor 14x to the fourth plus 7x cubed minus 42x squared into 7x squared times 2x minus 3 times x plus 2. I would like you to try number 6 on your own. Pause the video, try it out, and then resume, and I'll walk you through it. I see that all of my numbers are even, so I'm going to have 2 in my greatest common factor. Look at the variables. z to the fourth, z squared, no z's. So I don't have a variable in the greatest common factor. I just have 2. So I'm going to factor 2 out. z to the fourth minus 6z squared minus 54. Divide by 2. Check it really fast. Make sure we've got it right. 27. So when we factor 2z to the fourth minus 12z squared minus 54, we can pull out a 2 using the reverse distributive property. And we're left with 2 times z to the fourth minus 6z squared minus 27. Second step count the number of terms. So we're counting the number of terms inside our brackets. We have one, two, three terms inside of our brackets. And so we're going to try that factoring using the AC method again. So one thing I do want to point out, before when we were doing the AC method, we usually had squared to the first power as our variable exponents. But we don't have that here. We have to the fourth and squared. This just means we have to be careful when we break this middle term up. We want to make sure that we match the variable part. We have like terms when we create the new terms, that they're both z squared. And then we're going to try to factor. There's never a guarantee that things will factor, but we're going to try. So a will be 1, the number in front of z to the fourth. b is negative 6. c is negative 27. And then two numbers that multiply to be negative 27 and add to be negative 6. We can start at the very beginning. 1 times negative 27. I want the bigger number to be negative since I'm adding to get a negative number. Negative 26 is too big. 2 doesn't work. 3 times negative 9 will give me negative 27. And 3 plus negative 9 gives me negative 6. So I am looking at 3 times negative 9 there to break this middle term up. So 3, and I'm going to keep the like terms, z squared minus 9z squared, and then I'll bring down the rest of it. Minus 27, 3 is positive, so I want to keep that positive there, z to the fourth, and then z, um, two to, on the outside. So again, notice three z squared minus nine z. If I add these together, I end up with negative six z squared. And now we can group, group the first two and group the last two. Bring my two down from the greatest common factor. z to the fourth plus three z squared. z squared is in common. And then minus sign's going to come down. 9z squared minus 27, 9 in common. z squared plus, because I'm pulling out a minus 9, negative times a positive will give me a negative 27. And 9 times 3 is 27. And I have common factors of z squared plus 3, so 2 z squared plus 3, and then I'm going to write the rest of it in parentheses, z squared minus 9. 
And now we'd work on our last step. We check the factors. Z squared, there's a perfect square, but I have a plus. Remember that if I have a sum of squares, I cannot factor it. Three is not a perfect square, so I don't have a sum of squares. So this factor, this first factor, z squared plus three, it's not factorable. But look at that next factor, z squared minus nine. I have a perfect square, z is being squared. I have a perfect square, nine is three squared, and we're subtracting. This is a difference of squares, so we have to factor it. Difference of squares factors with z and three in parentheses z3, 1's a plus, 1's a minus. It does not matter which is which. Remember that the order of the factors does not matter when we multiply. And then we'll copy the rest of it over z squared plus 3 and the 2 on the outside. And this 2 times z squared plus 3 times z plus 3 times z minus 3 is our final factored answer. Let's try number seven. 18 a to the third minus eight ab squared. 18 and eight are both even, so they're divisible by two, and I see that I have a to the third and ab squared. I can factor out an a. Two a times nine will give me 18 a, and a squared will give me a to the third. 2a times 4b squared will give me 8ab squared. And I see my greatest common factor, 2a. We'll pull that out front. And we have 9a squared minus 4b squared in parentheses. And the second step, after we factor out our greatest common factor, we count the number of terms in our factors. One, two terms in this factor. So let's see if we have a special product. We have no cubes, so we don't have to worry about a sum or a difference of cubes, but we do have perfect squares. Nine a squared, nine is three squared, and a squared will give me a. Four b squared, four is two squared, and I can put my b in there. So I have a difference of squares, and we need to factor that. Difference of squares factors, two factors, one sum, one difference. The first thing squared in the first part of our factors, the second thing squared in the second part of our factors. So the only thing that's different between them is the sign in the middle. And I'm going to bring this 2a down front, 2a times 3a plus 2b times 3a minus 2b. And we do a quick check. Nothing's squared, nothing's cubed. That's as far as we can break it down. Take a look at number eight. We don't have any greatest common factors. So let's try counting our terms. One, two, three terms. So we're gonna try that AC method. A, the number in front of the squared variable. B, the number in front of the single variable, and C, the number by itself. And we need to find two numbers that multiply to be A times C, seven times three is 21, and that add to be negative 18. So we can start out simple, 21, one times 21, but since I want them to add to be negative, we're going to make both of them negative. Negative 22. 2 doesn't divide, so we can skip it. 3. 3 times 7 will give me 21, so negative 3 times negative 7 will give me 21. And negative 3 plus negative 7 gives me negative 10. Okay. Now, I write this down mostly to say that I don't have any other pairs of numbers that multiply to be 21 unless I switch over to positives. But if I add positive numbers, I'm not going to get negative 18. Also, look, I have negative one, negative three, and I go from negative 22 to negative 10 when I add. I'm completely skipping the negative 18 in the middle. 
And remember, 2 does not divide 21. 21 is not even, so 2 is not a factor. And since I cannot add to get negative 18, then I cannot factor this trinomial. And we can say this trinomial is not factorable, or sometimes you'll see it written as prime. We cannot factor it. Now, in order to show work that it is indeed not factorable, we need to have some sort of record that we've tried something. So trying to do the AC method, we see that we can't and that nothing works. And then we can state that it's not factorable.